Let me introduce Harun Shaikh to you, who will um, deliver our column. Um, perhaps well known already to many of us, um, director of the Freedom Lab, a think tank. You teach philosophy at the Free University, and of course you're a columnist at NSA Handelsblad, written a book, first in Dutch, and um, to be published soon as an English version, The Rise of the East. Thanks very much for joining us for your column. The floor is to you. Thank you. <clears throat> Many years ago, as a young student, I read The Open Society and Its Enemies. And I have to admit, I found the book strange. Karl Popper's book appeared in 1945 as the Second World War was in its final act. And he didn't write about military mobilization about the Great Depression or geopolitical rivalry. Instead, he wrote about ideas. In two volumes, he traced totalitarian movements to modes of thought in Hegel, Marx, and even Plato. At the time, this seemed to me like another philosopher exaggerating the relevance of his own field of expertise. But thinking about the current threats to the open society, there might be more to it than that. In our digital age, it is all about the battle of ideas. We now also face threats from closed societies abroad. These are, however, much less tangible than they were in the past. No foreign military provides us with an existential threat like in Popper's time. No powerful country adheres to an ideology of violent struggle. Yes, there's North Korea. It remains a closed society mobilized for war, and its nuclear threat is real. But it is a strange remnant of a black and white, wor black and white world that has come to pass. The real threat from foreign powers is much more subtle, because it involves a battle of ideas. And this battle is tailored to our use of social media. But neither foreign nor domestic actors that promote radical belie beliefs are, in my view, the most formidable challenge to the open society. A more serious threat than radical belief is the gentle undermining caused by disbelief. Digital media have covered society with a thick mist of doubt. Conspiracy theories, fake news, and alternative facts surround our public sphere. More than fearing this will convince us of something, I fear it will make us cynical. The thick mist has transformed the mass media into a media mass where everything depends on perspective. Heroes become villains and villains can become heroes. Science becomes an opinion among others and its knowledge on climate change, child vaccination and nutrition is undermined by amateurs. Skepticism about our public institutions is the greatest threat to the open society. It is a subtle threat, because if instead of attacking it from the outside, it, er it erodes the open society from the inside. And it is easy to imagine this situation getting worse. Behind me is an image of a software program that is trained with, the with voice samples and facial patterns of Barack Obama. This program can now make him say anything we want, indistinguishable from the real thing. This dangerous technology already exists, and more is on the horizon. The so-called Internet of Things promises to make our physical world smart. But it also means that we can graft our filter bubbles onto the physical world. Imagine real-life subtitles wherever we go telling us to invade, pe evade people or places that do not fit uh, with the beliefs we have. Our open society would then splinter into 17 million closed societies. As citizens get lost in the midst of the internet, we require a policy response, and I believe that that is possible. Let me end by giving a suggestion based on an analogy. Throughout history, New technologies like trains and cars have made us more mobile. 
This has opened up new spaces and also presented us with new dangers. This is what Professor Ignatieff referred to as, this, as the openness that threatens to challenge democracy itself. But in the past, with specific policies, we managed to mitigate the dangers of these wild open spaces. Infrastructure critical for our safety, in time were regulated like utilities. Passports and license plates created accountability for the anonymous users. Speed limits and safety belts protected us against dangerous behavior. And for victims, we developed insurance. So my question is, can we come up with a digital equivalent of passports, speed limits, and safety belts? <laughs>